Well, Cameo has the ability to automatically read your requirement text and then convert that into constraints. We will show you the way to manually link values within your requirement to certain value properties so that you can add constraints and do pass-fail tests. We have another video to explain the automatic text read, but for this, we're going to go and make sure that that is off. So we're gonna to go to Options, Project, General, General, and scroll down and turn Use Requirements Term Glossary and Use Glossary to off. When I click OK, these lines will disappear, and we can run this in simulation, and there's, there's no constraints associated. So we're going to add a couple new value properties, the max temperature threshold, which is going to be 73 degrees, and the minimum as well. So now we're going to link the text to the value properties. and. We're going to link them to the values within the value properties. If you aren't seeing this right here, you can just go to the value property and then the default value and you can right click it and then select it containment tree and it will populate it there for you. Um, so now let's link it. So I've got my text right here. Um, let's just make this something slightly different than the other value just so that we know what's different. So I'm going to highlight it and then do a control K. That's going to bring up this hyperlink. And now we're going to go search for our uh, min temperature threshold value. So, and I'm going to select the value itself and not the value property. Click OK. And see this little warning comes up. So I'm going to change it to representation text. So it's going to show me the value. Um, and uh, you have options here. I'm going to just do automatically checked and not automatically updated. Um, both of these work well um, but we'll just show this one first so now what you're seeing here is the value is from up here is going to be down here so if i go ahead and change this value to 70.2 it changes it to 70.2 here notice that it didn't change it to 70.2 here immediately and that's because i chose um the uh let's see That's because I chose the automatically checked feature and not the automatically updated feature. So it, it updated it and that, that shall go away. Um, if I change it again, 71.8, change it here, and then it, it will flag me. The way to you know get the flag to go away, you just click on it and then you click this X up here. And then you have your options. You have update this value to 70.2. That 70.2 is from the requirement. Or you can update the text. So you update the requirement text with the current value, which is at 71.8. So this it's it's basically it's allowing you to check to pick which one is the truth. So we're gonna say that the 70.71.8 is the truth. So update text with the current value, and you see that it updates it down here. So now what we can do is do that control K again and uh, we'll change this to automatically updated and so now when I change this value from 71.8 to 73.9 you see that it's changed it in both places so I can also change it down here as well with the caveat that when I go in if I just change this uh, value right here, it's actually adding a name to it. So it's name of value, which is kind of weird. So like if I go into the spec window, it's uh, when you just like type it in, it's changing the name of it, not the value of it. So if I go in here and change this value to 80, and then now it, it propagates through to all the locations. A couple things to note about this feature, it is very modular in the fact that you don't have to necessarily connect uh, requirement text to a value property uh, value. You can you can hyperlink anything to anything, so very modular. The downside is that it is a little bit finicky. I've run into several situations where um, it will f flag a, 
let's see if I can make it happen here. If I change the value right here to like 81, and then it puts a red circle around this, which is what you would anticipate, and it kind of tells you all of the parts that's potentially wrong. Um, so I can find my X here, and then I can say synchronize text, update reference value. So these are our two um, options. One of them, it's, it's the whole what is truth thing. So I'm gonna say update, update reference value. So we're changing everything to 81. And this is where I find the glitch happens, where it still has this red box around um, around the requirement, even though like everything is synced up. You can try to update and use all of the options, and nothing changes, and uh, you're kind of left at a loss. But all you have to do is just restart the diagram, and now it's gone. So that's the workaround right now. So to take the example one step further, you can add constraint blocks to uh, pass failure requirements. So this will be a max temp. So we would say uh, actual temp must be less than or equal to the max temp. And then we would have another one for minimum temp. which would be the exact opposite. Actual temp must be greater than or equal to the minimum temp. And we can just drag these on there. There we go. Just gotta kinda hide it from the screen. And then we can create a parametric diagram. Follow our things. And create, parse and create parameters. And then show those parameters. Same thing, this is the parsing create parameters, and then show those parameters, and uh, start connecting the dots here. Now when I run this, we have our values that are over here. So minimum temperature should really be something like that. We, we made this too high. So uh, in reality, my wife's minimum temperature is going to be like 70 degrees or something. So she's happy between the ranges of 70 to 73. And then I can push play. And now everything is good to go. So if I go to 78 degrees, we're not happy. If I go to 60 degrees, we're not happy. But uh, there's that sweet spot there. 71, 72, that we're, we're good. So the constraints do work as anticipated.